to the UIAAA Connection podcast. GoFan and VNN are proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection. Now a combined company, GoFan and VNN provide a seamless integration for digital ticketing and athletic websites. Direct your fans to one place for all your athletic events, communications, and tickets to home and away games. Thank you to GoFan and VNN for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today we have as our special guest, Ann Stewart, Certified Master Athletic Administrator and a member of the NIAAA Board of Directors and the Athletic Director, let me see if I got this right, at Los Alamos High School. Is you got correct? it. All that right. is welcome correct. To the, welcome to the podcast. Let's first of all, for those of us that are geographically challenged, I think I know where Los Alamos is. I think it's north of Santa Fe, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to have you tell us where that is. You're you're right on there, Mark. It's no, just north west-ish of Santa Fe, about 30 miles. Um, so we're, we're, you know, right in the north central part of New Mexico. And so the highlands, so it's in the mountains? We are. We're about 6,500 um, to 7,000 uh, feet. Pretty area. All mm -hmm. right. Well, that's perfect. Let's have you begin by sharing with our international audience now where you grew up, where you went to college, your first job, et cetera. Sure. I actually grew up in Los Alamos, graduated from there. So I'm back, you know, working at my alma mater. Um, I've been there, been back there since 2012 and started back teaching there. So um, I, my first jobs up there, I, you know, waited tables at Pizza Hut where that was actually a thing. You didn't just order at the counter or, you know, order on your phone and go in and pick it up. So we actually had, you know, a jukebox and got to order from a, a waitress or waiter and wait at your table for your pizza. So um, I did that. I scooped ice cream at Baskin Robbins, which I think that's actually the, still my favorite job ever. Um, ate a lot of ice cream, came up with a lot of concoctions and um, probably first learned how to make a really good daiquiri at that point in time. Um, daiquiri ice was a thing and we won't, we can probably skip that part, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, so that, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of where things started. I played soccer and basketball at, in high school and um, started playing soccer at a really young age. And that's, that's where I started. So I'm back to, I've made, made it full circle. I. That's awesome. I have to ask you a question about your pizza hut experience. <laughs> I, it's, I'm just wondering, and, and I'm sure it was great work in there, but <clears throat> if they had a jukebox, did people play the same songs over and over again? Were there songs you were tired of hearing or, or do people, because there's so many people that come in get a wide range of music. I'm just wondering. There were some, there was a wide range, I think, but the, if it wasn't playing, there were some that were just on repeat that the jukebox would play. Um, so every now and again, a song will come on and it'll throw me right back to that where, oh, that was on there all the time. And I'm of course drawing a blank, but I'll hear sure. it. There's some, some of those oldies from the late eighties ish that I'll remember you know See, it's the difference in our ages you say oldies <laughs> and you say late 80s when i say oldies <laughs> i mean 60s so that's funny sure. well let's talk about so you obviously uh you taught you talked about playing soccer and basketball in high school uh did you play it all i assume you played the, the youth sports there in los alamos did you play it all when you went to the university i did i actually um i went to creighton on a soccer scholarship uh, I played for a year and I hurt my back. I still don't know what actually happened, but um, tried to recover and recuperate and it just wasn't cooperating. So I came back to New Mexico and went to UNM and finished out things 
in a kind of a long, awkward path to do that. But I got my uh, criminology degree and I was a cop or police officer for a few years. Um, took an awkward path to get to where I am, but I was a police officer for a few years. Um, and like I said, a criminology degree. And I had started coaching um, basketball and soccer here and there in in the meantime in some of this and uh, realized that that was my true kind of path and calling. And so in the midst of my police career, I decided, oh, I'm going to go get my teaching certification. So I did that and changed career paths, you know, 20 plus years ago. And here I am. That's awesome. Let me ask you, growing up in Los Alamos and the only the one year at Creighton, so Omaha, mm -hmm. be, is it a little bit of a culture shock for uh, someone like yourself coming from Los Alamos to, to Omaha? It, it was. Um, I had spent a lot of time in Dallas. I had family in Dallas. So every summer I'd gone to Dallas and we traveled around here and there a little bit. So yeah, it, it was a little bit different, but it was neat. I'd always been independent. I'd traveled for soccer camps here and there during the summer. So, you know, and I had family in California and Washington. So I'd been around, but it, you know, we'd get out of there in, in Los Alamos, you know, growing up, you didn't hardly lock your doors. So it, mm. it definitely was a little different getting out of, getting out of town and, realizing there's a real world out there let's have you talk for a moment about some of the mentors you've had in your life that have made a difference yeah. as uh, to help you get where you are now sure um obviously you know for a lot of people family and parents um my mom by far um you know i you know i'm currently sitting in my parents house uh taking care of my mom and um that's just my best influence throughout my life. She's just always been been there when I needed her. And so now it's time to turn those tables and, and take care of her. Um, my high school soccer coach, um, Gail Murphy, um, just kind of really taught me and, and helped me grow up really, um, uh, kind of came into high school, just immature and and things like that and she just helped me grow as a as a person and and helped my attitude and things like that and how to be a stronger person and athlete and mentally strong and things like that so um you know I give her credit for some of that and I had some other coaches along the way as well I think that helped in that but for you know I I think back and she really helped with that and helped my mental game with as an athlete and things like that so um going on professionally um some names that you probably are familiar with vicky nelms mm. uh who just retired in oregon and she was my predecessor here in los alamos and lawrence johnson who's also from new mexico and passed on a few years back lawrence you're um, on the board with me oh Great. awesome yes and he was an amazing mentor and both of them really started my path to where I am now with, with the NMADA and the NIAAA. And both of them said, if you're going to be, you know, an athletic director here, this is what you're going to do. And I really didn't have a choice. Honestly, they just said here, here, take these, start taking these classes and you're going to get involved because that's what you need to do. Um, so, you know, I give them credit. They, they gave me some good, you know, words of wisdom along the way and, and helped me get started. So, um, and kind of last but not least, I'm, I'm inspired by all of our peers who kind of make this job look easy and, and hmm. give us, we know it's not. And sometimes there's days where we need that and we need kind of that kick in the pants to say, Hey, we can all do it and, and keep on going. Well said. <clears throat> And what's your biggest failure or disappointment in life? And what did you learn from it? Oh, that, that, that's a hard one. I think trying to think about that, um, it's hard to pinpoint just one. We all probably have many failures along the way. And um, with the job, if I think about this job, there's probably every day there's something. 
Um, it seems like I fail at something every day. Um, coaching, you know, there's probably a, a kid I failed, you know, I probably took the tough love route and I should have been a little more gentle and kind. And I think about that particular kid and had I done something different, you know, maybe I could have helped her in a different way. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint just one thing with that. Um, you know, how do I now even, how can I help my parents better? How could I have helped my dad better? So that's, that's a tough one. Sure. <clears throat> Let's have you talk about the job of athletic administrator and how it's different from when you first got the job years ago. Um, it's certainly not an easy job. Uh, I think we all know that anybody in this position knows that. Um, I little bit of a funny story when I first got the job or just before I got the job, um, when I applied for it, when Vicki decided to, she was going to move to Oregon, um, I told our current principal at the time, I said, it's the perfect job for me. And, you know, I love sports and I had been coaching and it was something that, you know, I was working towards is becoming an athletic director. And when I told her that, and I said, it's a perfect job for me, she said, and there is no perfect job. And, uh, that was just, you know, her quote and, uh, boy, was she right. Um, I actually, she and Vicki came to town a few, well, a couple months ago now, and, um, they got to see some of the new stuff that we'd done since they'd been around. And, and I got to bring up that quote to her and she's like, well, was I right? And she, I said, for sure you were, but, uh, um, I think it's, it's changed in that I think each year, each year parents get more and more involved for good or for better or for worse. Um, I think sometimes it's, it's great because you want parent involvement, but sometimes it's too much. You know, we all talk about um, when we're, when we're together as, as our, with our colleagues and stuff that um, every kid's going to go D one. And we know that that's not the case. <laughs> and uh you know, or they're going to go pro or something like that. Not in our small town, we have a handful of kids that go play in college, go to the next level. Um, and so I think kind of figuring out that route that we all do, bringing them back down to, uh, to, to earth. Um, but I think it's just some of the other stuff that we deal with year to year that seems to pile on the, the political stuff, you know, more funding, um, everything's more expensive every year, getting teams more money, more more money for construction and, and updates to our facilities and things like that. Um, you know, we, in our, within our administrative teams, nobody knows our job and trying to explain that um, to the people that we work with. Because many times, you know, they don't know. I'm fortunate mm -hmm. right now. We just hired an, uh, an assistant athletic director. So I'm more comfortable not being in the office, um, because I have somebody there that can manage things while I'm gone. I couldn't be gone right now in the middle of our busiest fall season. Um, if I didn't have somebody there that could, could handle it. Um, cause people just don't know what we do day to day. Sure. Let me ask you about your journey with the New Mexico <clears throat> Athletic Directors Association and then on with the NIAAA. And of course, you mentioned Lawrence and you mentioned Vicki. <clears throat> it brings back memories. And so this may have been before I knew you well. I know I came to New Mexico, I want to say maybe six or seven years ago for your conference. I was a speaker. Mm -hmm. I think Scott Evans brought me in. But talk about your journey with the New Mexico Association and then how that led to uh, serving in the NIAAA as a state coordinator. Sure. Um, well, and you mentioned it. I, Lawrence and Vicki started me on this path and they pushed me to start taking the classes and get certified and you know, Vicki left and I was already on my way to my CAA certification. So it wasn't long after she left that I could take over as she was a state coordinator um, when she was here. And I was able to step into that role and help with Larry 
uh, Waters as a state coordinator and um, who you also know well. Right. And um, we, you know, just kind of went from there. And as a state coordinator, I um, was able to get even more involved with the NIAAA and that wonderful group of people that we get to see, you know, twice a year. And, um, you know, that it just opened up more doors again with the NIAAA and I got involved, um, got on the conference planning committee uh, a number of years ago. Um, I roll off that committee this year. And then um, our New Mexico board seat came open last year and I, you know, I was nominated from our state to take that role. So um, that was an awesome opportunity. And, you know, that's a great group of people to be involved with and to help, <clears throat> excuse me, help move our organization forward and plan for the future with, you know, the, um, the things that we're looking forward to doing in the upcoming years. Let's have you talk for a, mo a little bit more about being a state coordinator. So if I heard you right, so you just basically took the position when Vicki left. Mm -hmm. And so obviously that's when I first met you, but I want you to talk to our, our audience about, uh, everyone thinks oh yeah well they get this trip and they go to indianapolis every september and they you know have fun and mess around and i don't think everybody understands that you get there and you're in meetings all day saturday <laughs> all day sunday i think we get like two hours to meet with each other sunday night monday morning mm -hmm. and then gone again but talk about uh the uniqueness of that state coordinator summit it's you know it was eye-opening when i first went and in from the minute you're there, I mean, you're going, you're rocking and rolling and we're learning and, you know, updates every year and how things are, are, you know, adjusting and changing and how to do things better within our states. And, um, you know, Nellie and Alex and how we can help our states better and, and that whole group, but, you know, we're learning how to help our ADs within our states and grow our certification um, you know, with Larry and, you know, we were able to do some outreaches a couple years in a row during COVID. Um, we've got a group that's ready to test. Um, it's getting them to do the, the stuff they need to do to test. Um, everybody, I think nationwide has a, a decent turnover in ADs from year to year. So, you know, trying to figure out how do we hang on to them and maybe with the courses and getting them certified and get, try to figure out how do we get more um, administrative support for them. And I think, you know, there's a number of states trying to get state support for certification and things like that. So we're all in there trying to put our brains together and how to support ADs at the state level and nationally and we're not just sitting it's not a big party that we're going to indianapolis to you know get away for the weekend so you know it's great to to get together with you know our friends but um we're working and that's you know when i tell people or i show people here's my schedule um don't think i'm going for for a party for the weekend i'm working all weekend you guys get to go home for the weekend and I'm going to the football game Friday night and I'm flying out at five o'clock Saturday morning and I'm coming back Monday night and I haven't had a weekend. So, but that's well, that's well said. Uh, <laughs> let's have you share with our audience uh, one or two experiences or stories you remember uh, because you're one of the few, because there's not a whole lot of people to get to serve on the NAAA board. I want you to share just what it's like there and, and basically the uh, relationships and basically uh, hooking up with people all over the nation. So share some stories. It's, it's only been, I've been there a year. Um, in fact, my first board meeting was, I came on a little bit early, um, but I was actually here in Montana last year, checking on my parents for my first board meeting. Um, in December, I was able to witness how great of a connection that they make 
Um, <laughs> there were some shenanigans that happened in the boardroom that I, you could just see the the connection that they have and um, that have nothing to do with, you know, any board goings on. It was just the friendships and, and the collegial connections, the family that they become over the years that they're, they serve on the board together. And, you know, that's, that's part of, you know, what I'm, you know, I'm blessed to be a part of, I guess. And it, then the added piece of, Hey, we get to help, you know, move this organization forward and, and see what we can do with that. And, but yeah, we're, there are connections that you wouldn't have the chance to make normally and you're there a couple you know what we have two online meetings in february and july and december we get to be together in person and really get those connections over a few days each time and and have that time together to to get to know each other and and really form those bonds that we need to to do all the things that we need to accomplish. Great insight. Let me have you share with our audience your <clears throat> observations regarding, well, I say the recent NIAAA conference. It's almost been a year now, but Nashville, and of course, I've mentioned this on other podcasts before, how about it was the most attendees we've ever had. But I want, mm -hmm. I want your perspective uh, about the Nashville conference and how successful it was. It, it was great. It was great to see the numbers as part of the conference planning committee. Of course, we get the updates, you know, leading into it of as to where we are. And we're honestly even, you know, we're talking about Nashville, but going into Orlando, our numbers are looking amazing going into Orlando this year. But um, the and seeing it from a, even a different lens as being part of the board last year, um, watching those numbers and seeing how many people just want that information that they get from a national conference and making the the connections with other ADs and seeking that, that information, that um, professional development that they can get from that national conference. Um, it's great to see, you know, I've, I've learned so much. And that was, again, another thing that Vicki was able to pave that way because she uh, she had always gone to the national conference. So it's been something I've never had to fight um, with my district to be able to go. And I think um, any AD that can have that opportunity to go to the national conference, that it's just an opportunity that they need. And um, it's definitely a fight they should have with their district to make sure that they can have that professional development opportunity because there's nothing like it and all the sessions they can get or the courses they can take and to go to that. And, you know, Nashville was huge. And I think maybe that's the central location that people from both coasts could get there. Um, but again, I, like I said, Orlando's looking good as well. Excellent. What's the favorite part of your job, Ann? Um, it may be cliche, but I think watching the kids succeed and and seeing the smiles on their faces and their excitement and enjoyment when they when they do well because that's what it's all about very good let me finish up with a couple of questions the first one is excuse me you've got Ann Stewart's two suggestions to be a success as a brand new AD and they need to follow your suggestions in order to be successful what would your two suggestions be Number one, I think be patient with yourself and those around you. Um, it takes time to learn your job. And as I, again, as I mentioned earlier, understand that you're probably the only one in your building who may know your job. So when you need help, um, you're going to have to reach out to others around you in other districts or other ADs. Um, you may not find those answers within your building. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help, um, or ask for guidance. Um, and I would say number two is learn not to th take things personally because people, um, and I think I learned this even more 
once I had a child in this job, um, people are trying to help their kids succeed. Um, so when you have parent issues, it's about their kid and not necessarily about you. So um, don't take things personally. Very good. And what questions should I have asked you that I failed to ask you? <laughs> this might be as hard as the, um, what is your biggest failure question? Cause I couldn't, I can't come up with, you know, something that you should have asked me. Um, so I think I fail at this question. Um, I don't know. So I can't, I can't come up with something there, Mark. Well, and that's, uh, that's certainly uh, not an issue that either speaks to me doing a good job or me doing a poor job. So either way, that's <laughs> great. So on that, <clears throat> that wraps it up for this edition of the UI AAA Connection. Again, our special guest today has been Ann Stewart, Certified Master Athletic Administrator, member of the NIAAA Board of Directors and the Director of Athletics at Los Alamos High School in New Mexico. And thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you having me. It's been a great time. For our listeners, we hope you tune in again next week for another edition of the UI AAA Connection. 